So we have the graphs and relations between them. What type of graphs we have, as you can see, uh, we did, we, we were having a displacement time graph. We have velocity time graph. And we have acceleration time graph. Okay. You can relate these graphs with each other. For example, if a displacement time graph and you need a velocity time graph. From displacement time graph, you need a velocity time graph. What you will do? How you will relate? You will check the slope, the gradient or the slope. If velocity time graph and you want acceleration time graph, what you will do? You will relate the slope. So if you want to relate the displacement time graph with velocity time graph, we relate by a slope, okay? And we want to relate a velocity time graph with expression time graph, again, we'll relate by a slope. But if you have expression time graph and you need a velocity time graph, then what you will do, you will only check the y-axis. I'll give an example so you'll understand what does it mean. And if you have a velocity time graph and you need a displacement time graph, again, you will use the y-axis. Now, I'll give an example. Let's the, take the first example. And I'll make a simple graph. So you have in exam, you have a displacement time graph. What if in a curved graph, the velocity of the acceleration is changing in a non-uniform way, like acceleration time graph is curved, what will be the velocity time graph? Uh, Ahmad, I will come back to that point as well. But uh, right now, what you're learning in, in A-levels, especially in AAS chemistry, you're only learning the motion with a constant acceleration. You are taking accelerated, accelerated motions, which are in which the acceleration is constant. So, for a non-linear graph, the non-linear accelerations you are not learning that. So, example, we have a displacement time graph, and this say sketch a velocity time graph. How to do this? From displacement time graph, if I need a velocity time graph, what I have to do? I have to use a slope. So use a slope means like check the slope. What happened to this slope? It is increasing, decreasing, constant, zero. What happened to the slope? Decrease. Slope decrease. So it means the velocity will decrease. And what about the value of the velocity? Positive. It will be positive. So it means if I have a velocity time graph, if I have a velocity time graph, my velocity should be positive because this is a positive velocity. This is an, but the value of the velocity should decrease. Like velocity will have a maximum value in the beginning and then it start to decrease. So what will be the shape of the graph? In this case, if I sketch these results, the velocity should be positive and decreasing. So this will be the velocity time graph. Is it uh, clear? So what we will yes. do, if we have a displacement time graph, from a displacement time graph, we will use a slope and after the slope, what we will do? We will plot on the y-axis. Not always a straight line. It, it can be an increase. It depends on how to know whether the change in the velocity is constant or change in the velocity is same. You, then you have to work out another thing, like you should know the acceleration of an object. So cur yes, curve do happen. How I will know that whether it will be a curve or not? 
then what I have to do because in that case, if I want to know that whether it should be a curve or it, it should be a straight line, say this is a time is equals to one, time is equals to two, time is equals to three, okay? Then what I have to do, I have to work out the velocity at point time is equals to one and draw a tangent. Then I have to work out the velocity at time is equals to two and draw a tangent. Then I have to know the velocity at time is equals to three and draw a tangent. Velocities will be different. Definitely the velocities will be different because the angles are different. But it might be a same change. Like for example, say this was four meter, the tangent value was four meter per second. Then the tangent value was example, um, uh, say 3.5 meters per second. Then the tangent value example was three meters per second. So as you can see here, the velocity is changing same every second. So it means I should have a straight line. Like first velocity was four. After one second, it will be 3.5. After two seconds, it will be three and so on. Is it uh, clear, this example, that how I know that it will be a straight line or a curve? Anyone having a doubt or a question? What if it was not then the points? Because see, whenever you have a velocity time graph, a displacement time graph, the slope represents the velocity. So what we actually do, To understand, we should check the gradient. So we have a displacement time graph. And here the velocity, uh, the slope represents the velocity. We know that the velocity is decreasing and its value is positive. And if you have a time axis like one is there, two, three, four, five, because sometimes question is about sketching. Sometimes question is about plotting. So if the question is about plotting, means you need the values as well. So we identify that the velocity should decrease and the value of the velocity should be positive. So we have to use a positive, y, positive velocity axis, but the value should decrease. But whether the decrease is same constant or decrease is in, uh, like there's a greater decrease, in the first section, how to know that, then you have to draw a tangent here at different points. Like I mark a point, I draw a tangent. Then I mark a point, I draw a second tangent. Then we draw the third tangent, fourth tangent. So if I find every tangent, the angle changes by same number. Like say first the angle with the X axis, say was 30 degrees, then 20 degrees, then 10 degrees, so it means the velocity will change with a constant number. So in that case, the numbers will be like this. And it will be a straight line. You can use a derivative, but for curves, yes, you can. That's dy by dx is actually the slope or the tangent. This is one way of identifying. If or you, you can work out the number. Like example, when I work out the gradient of this part, I got five meters per second. When I work out the gradient of the second part, I got four meters per second. When I work out the gradient of the third part, I got say 2.5 meters per second. When I got the gradient of the last part, say it is horizontal, so zero meters per second. Now what will be the shape of this graph? As the gradients are different at different points, and the gradient represents the velocity here. So the first velocity will be five. The second velocity will be four. Then the third velocity will be 2.5 greater degree. And then the last velocity is zero. So it will be curved like this. Like change is increasing. How to get the angles? You can also measure the angles. Just draw the horizontal line here and you measure these angles. If you find every position, the angle change is same. Like first it was 50, then 40, then 30. It means it is a constant 
change in the velocity. Is it uh, clear, this idea? Anyone having a doubt or a question? Whether the change is constant or whether a change is non-linear? Uh, non Yes, Mubashir, Aisha, Fabia, Mohammadisa, Shaheer. So if we have another graph, if we have another graph, a displacement time graph, Say we have a displacement time graph and we have curve like this. What, what does it show about the slope? What it represent about the slope? Or the Decrease. velocity? Velocity. If you take the angle with the x-axis here and you take the angle of x-axis here. So the angles are different. Angle is increasing. So if the angle is increasing, it means the slope is increasing or we can say the velocity should increase. Okay, that is one thing. Then what about the value of the velocity? Is it positive or negative? It is positive. So it is positive. So now we need the velocity time graph we need the velocity time graph, we need the velocity to be positive and increasing. But whether the increase is constant, like this is a positive velocity, this one will be the negative velocity, because this is, so velocity is increasing. So there are different ways the velocity can increase. It might be a constant increase in velocity, like this is also increasing velocity. This is also increasing velocity. Because the y-axis, I'm not talking about the slope. This is also increasing velocity. All of them are increasing velocity because the value of the y-axis is increasing. The displacement time graph, the slope represents the velocity. And when we sketch a velocity time graph, the velocity time graph, so we'll take the y-axis here. So all these cases, the velocity is increasing. But whether the increase is a constant or not, or it's a non-linear, for that, what you have to do, you have to draw tangent at different points. Like take after one second, two seconds, three seconds, four, five. So if you draw a tangent at these points and you found, I'm just writing numbers here. Say we, when we measure the angle for the first tangent with X axis, how to get an X axis, just draw a horizontal line. Say so you measure the first number, the angle was 10 degree. You measure the second number, say the angle was 12. For a sketching, all these possibles are there. Say the angle is 12 degrees, 20, uh, 12 degrees. The third one, the angle example is 15 degrees. The fourth one you found angle is example 20 degrees. The fifth one angle example 30 degrees. So you found that the angle is increasing so if the angle is increasing, so the, the slope of the velocity time graph should also increase. Like the, cha the change is increasing. As you can see here, what is the change here? The change is two degrees. What is the change here? Three degrees. What is the change here? Five degrees. And what is the change here? 10 degrees. So the change in the angle is greater. If the change in angle is greater, then with graph we'll have, we'll have a graph like this. Is it uh, clear? Yes. But what if <clears throat> we have a graph and the angles were like, it won't be exactly same because as you can see, it's already sketched accordingly. So what if just number I'm giving example, what if it was 10, then it was 20, then it was 25 degrees, then it is 28 degrees, and then it is 30 degrees. So when you work out the change in the angle here, the change in angle was 10, 
five, three, two. So the change in the angle is decreasing. It means the, what will the shape of this graph? The shape of the graph will be like this. And if the change in angle is same, like it was 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50, the change is all 10, so then it will be a straight line. So it actually depends on the change in the angle, how much the angle changes from one position to another. Is it uh, clear, the displacement time graph and the velocity time graph? Yes, sir. Same way, from the velocity time, from the displacement time graph, uh, from a velocity time graph, you can work out the acceleration time graph as well, the same manner. So if you have a velocity time graph, And so it is like this. So velocity time graph, if we need an expression time graph, we have to check the slope. What is the slope of this object? The slope of this line. Slope of this line. Is it increasing? Decreased. Slope. Slope of a straight line is always constant. constant sorry, yes. So slope is constant. That is one thing. The slope is of a straight line is always constant. The next thing is the value of the slope. Is it negative or positive? Negative. Because the y1 is above y2. So when the y1 is above y2, means the slope will be negative. So it is a constant negative slope. So we want to sketch an acceleration time graph. So if you want to sketch an expression time graph, so we want negative expression, negative constant expression, means the value of the expression should not change and it should be negative. So if the value of expression does not change a negative, so it will be a straight horizontal line below the x-axis. So the slope here, what is the slope of this? That is a y-axis. So see displacement time graph, the slope represents the velocity, and velocity time graph slope represent the expression. And when from a displacement time graph, we use a slope. So using a slope, what we have to do, we have to use a y-axis. Velocity time graph, we use a slope. And for that slope, we'll use a y-axis to plot the acceleration time graph. Is this clear, the example? Yes. Same way, if we have a velocity time graph, we can also work out a displacement time graph. So this is a velocity time graph. And the question is work out the displacement time graph. So if velocity time graph, we need the displacement time graph, we'll use a y-axis only. Don't bother about slope. Use the y-axis, the number on the y-axis. These are the positive numbers and this is a negative number. So for, and divide it, this into trends because like from A to B is one trend and from B to C is another trend. What happened from A to B, the value of the value of the y-axis from A to B, because you just use the y-axis. What is happening for the value of the y-axis? Like say, this is one, two, three, four, five. So value of the y-axis is increasing. So value of the y-axis is increasing. It means the slope, or we can also say the velocity is increasing. And what about the value of the velocity? It is positive. So from A to B, the velocity is increasing and it has a positive value. What happened from B to C? What happened to the value of the velocity when we move from B to C? The value of the velocity is decreasing. And what about the value? Value is still positive. Because you can see only we are using the positive y-axis. I'm not talking about slope. I'm just saying y-axis. Okay. So we just use the y-axis. So from A to B, the velocity is positive. And B to C, the velocity is negative. And it is, uh, sorry, sorry, from B to C, the velocity is decreasing. And it also has a positive value. 
Now what you have to do, you have to sketch a displacement time graph. So your displacement time graph should have two things. Number one, the slope should increase, but it should be positive slope. Number two, the slope should decrease and it should be positive slope. So, because these are the two trends which we have for the value of the velocity. So first I have to make a slope increase and positive value. So I can draw like this. Is it correct? The slope is increasing and has a positive value. Yes. Yes. So this is slope and then slope should decrease and a positive value. So So slope is decreasing. How we represent the slope is decreasing. But we need a positive value. So when I sketch a graph here, the first one, the velocity is increasing and it has a positive value. What are the possibilities here? When we draw, like this is one possibility because when velocity is increasing, there are two possible ways are there. This is velocity is increasing and a positive value. There's also another graph. This one. Which also shows that the velocity is increasing and it also have a positive value. So two possibilities are there for the first part. Then from B to C, the velocity is decreasing. The slope should decrease, but it, it should have a positive value. And the two graphs should be a continuation. I will use this space to explain the idea. Look, the displacement time graph, I need the velocity to increase. I want a slope to increase and positive. This is slope is increasing and positive. That is one possibility. Another possibility that the slope is increasing and positive. So this is a second possibility that the slope is increasing and positive. Both possibilities are there. So it can be starting like AB like this or it can start AB like this. Is it clear till this point? So both possibilities are there. Sir, what's the difference between these two graphs? The negative positive, but they're both positive. The negative, this only shows that the object is moving towards the right-hand side of the displacement, like the displacement is increasing. What this shows, this shows the object is moving towards the origin. Like object was at certain distance and it is coming back to the starting point. This is a graph for this object. Or an object is at origin and it starts to move in one direction. This is a graph for that object. That's the difference between the two. Is it clear? Okay. Yes. Now the second part, I want to join from B to C. I want the velocity to decrease and positive. So if I want a velocity to decrease and positive, so how I can sketch what will be the shape of the graph for velocity decreasing and a positive value? So if you have a displacement time graph, this is because the slope should decrease in a positive value. So this is one. This is one of the graph in which the slope is decreasing and a positive value. As you can see here, the angle is decreasing or the slope is decreasing and having a positive value. This is another graph. For a displaced, both of them. Now, which one I can join? For example, if student think that like one of the students started from A to B like this. Okay, that's fine. But the second graph when he plot, the second graph when he plot, because we want a displacement the velocity to decrease and a positive value. So either I can sketch this graph or this one. So when I sketch this graph here, what it shows, in this case, what it shows, it shows the velocity is negative, not the positive. We want the positive velocity. So what we can do, 
after joining from A to B, if we start from here, from A to B, the slope was increasing and the positive. Then from B to C, then from B to C, the slope is decreasing and positive. So this will be the displacement time graph of this object. Is it uh, clear? Or should I repeat? Sir, what if he did it, like if he began from A to B, the first one, the positive version? If you began from A to B, now what we have to do, the second part, we want the velocity to decrease and a positive. So if you continue like this, velocity to decrease and a positive B to C, as you can see here, velocity, the slope is decreasing and it's a positive value. And the first graph, which I sketch the first graph which I sketch I sketch from A to B then I sketch from B to C so what is the difference between the two graphs the only difference between the two graphs is a starting point so in this case the object was not at origin and it started to move towards the origin, it reaches the origin, and then it move away from the origin. That's like, say, this is the origin, the point where I'm observing the object. The object was moving towards the right-hand side. It reaches this point, and then the object continued to move. This is a graph for this object. It is correct. And the second graph, which I sketched, the second graph, which I sketched, that we were observing the object which was at the origin and it continued to move first. Its velocity was increasing and positive and then its velocity was decreasing and positive. So both graphs are correct because both are explaining that object is moving in a specific direction. The only difference was a starting point. Yeah, so it should, the first graph or the second, it, that's I'm saying that two graphs, both of the graphs are correct. The only difference between the two graphs is the point where we observe the object. If you observe from the origin, then the second graph is correct. If the object was not at the origin, it was at certain distance from origin, then the first graph will be correct. But we'll do more about these graphs and relation because it's important like interpreting or converting one graph to another. Any question or doubt related to the session? This topic we will continue tomorrow, inshallah, and uh, we'll do the motion in two dimension as well. Any question or doubt related to the class? No, thank you. Yes, sir.